In the year 1986, a young game developer by the name of Shigeru Miyamoto would finish a game that banked on his nostalgia of his childhood, running around searching around caves. If you have watched other videos based on this franchise, it's likely you already knew this, but if you're one of the few people not knowing that, congrats! You learned something new! That very game is The Legend of Zelda for the NES. I am here to see if this game still holds up today. This review contains spoilers. You have been warned. The game's story can be accessed in depth in the game's manual or as a quick summary after waiting long enough at the title screen. I really love the fact that Ganon is known as the Prince of Darkness in the original game. It makes him sound more epic than later installments would make him out to be. Anyhow, the game makes the goal of the game very clear. Collect the pieces of the Triforce Zelda has broken and hidden herself, and then defeat Ganon and rescue the Princess Zelda. This sets the whole conflict up well and introduces all key players in the series right off the bat. Link, your link to the game as the hero, Zelda as the goal, which sounds very bad saying in retrospect, and Ganon as the big bad and your final obstacle to saving the princess. A simple but effective narrative for a game back in the day, which works today as this is a gameplay driven game rather than a story driven one. With that said, let's move on to the gameplay itself! Before I move to the gameplay, if you wait longer, you will see what kind of items and key items you will run into during your legend, wait for it, DAIRY quest. Some which would become staples for the series, while others who either got reworked or never showed up again. Last, it instructs you to check your manual for more information. After pressing start, you reach the file select screen. If you haven't played the game, you have to register a new save file by entering a name using 1 to 8 characters. Naming the file Zelda holds a secret I will talk more about in a little bit. Once you are done, you can start the game where you are thrown into a world with ABSOLUTELY NOTHING! SAY IT AGAIN! Of course, there are three different screen exits and a cave, and the cave will likely pique your curiosity the most. Entering it will leave you with the most evil character of them all, the old man. He tells you the most famous line of them all, It's dangerous to go alone, take this! And presents you with your first sword in the game, the wooden sword. Granted, people are able to beat this game without the sword in its entirety. Then you are free to explore most of the world on your own, only using your wit, the map in the manual, pure luck and chance, Vague hints from NPCs that are better understood once you know the game, your memory, and the most effective way of them all, the internet. You move Link with the control pad, you attack with the sword using A, and Link can only stab forward. You use sub items with B, which you can switch in the pause menu. I will go through all of the items later. The movement is pretty stiff in this game, and to make up with the sword's short range, you can shoot using a sword beam at full health as well as using the sub-weapons for range or area attacks, also known as the bomb. Since the movement is stiff, it can be hard to get used to. Some sub-items can be bought as well as the medical shield, keys, meat, healing potions, blue ring, arrows, hearts, blue candle and bombs. All of these are paid various prices by shopkeepers in open or hidden shops. On the world map you can discover dungeons, heart containers, secret money rewards, breaking people houses which cost money as well as minigames and hint rooms. The dungeons are the meat of the game and here you can find various active sub items, items like the bow or magic wand, or passive items like the magic book, raft and ladder. Dungeons are rooms combined in maze like structures and here you can find a map which showcases the entire dungeon and compass which shows you where to find the triforce pieces of the dungeon. You can also see what rooms you've explored in a dungeon by going into the item menu. The Triforce piece is guarded by a boss, and since Zelda is the one who hid the Triforce pieces, I assume the enemies in the dungeons as well as the bosses are on Earth's side and not Ganon's side, since she did put the pieces there. In dungeons you can also find dungeon hints and hints about how to defeat the dungeon boss by the dreaded old man. You can also abuse him but the two fires will fight back shooting magic bolts towards you, so do it at your own risk. 
Some doors are locked permanently, while others are locked behind puzzles or locks requiring keys. You can also bomb certain walls to reveal hidden rooms or shortcuts. You can do the dungeons in almost any order, with the exception of the final dungeon, which requires all 8 Triforce pieces. You can find the dungeons most often in big structures, which makes them easy to find, but also in a lake and burn bushes. Bosses in the dungeons are for the most part easy, and you'll run into them as enemies in other dungeons, but they are still considered boss creatures by me. The Triforce guarding boss drops a heart container upon defeat. Now, let's go through what the items do. Boomerang! The boomerang is a mid-range item that stuns certain enemies. One of the most useful items in the game, and it has an upgrade in the form of the magical boomerang that reached the end of the screen, making it a long-range item. BOMBS! Used to find secrets on the overworld by bombing walls, can be used in dungeons to find secret passages and shortcuts, as mentioned earlier in the video. They are useful to damage enemies in groups, or bypass the Dark Nuts defenses, even if it deals minimum damage. They are also a very handy item, and you have a max limit of 8 bombs, which can be upgraded twice in certain dungeons for a mere 100 rupees each, making the max amount 16 in total. Bow and Arrow! The bow is a passive item without the arrows, and the arrows are the same without the bow. Both are quite separately. The bow and arrow is a long range item that can kill pulse voices in one hit and deal damage to enemies in long range. Also required to kill Goma the boss creature. Fun fact about the pulse voice is that in the Famicom version of the game you can kill them by shouting into the game's microphone as they hate loud noises. Each shot with an arrow costs 1 rupee each, making the maximum arrow limit to 255. You can later upgrade it into the Silver Arrow, which is required in order to kill the final boss. Not the most useful item against common enemies, but required for boss enemies. CANDLE! The blue candle can be bought in the shop and can only be used once per screen. The fire will hurt both you and most enemies. The candle can burn bushes that hold secrets and are required to beat the game. It can also lighten up pitch black rooms in the dungeons. In my personal opinion, the item as a weapon is garbage, with its limited use and poor damage output. It can be upgraded into the red candle, which has unlimited fire usage per screen. It's a bit more useful for finding secrets, but overall it's not the best item. It's a pretty situational after all. Flute! Or recorders as it's also called. It has two main uses. In combat, it's used to make the immortal Dig Dogger boss creature smaller and split it into smaller pieces can be damaged and destroyed. On the world map, it's used to teleport you to already beaten dungeons where the Triforce piece has been collected already. It's handy for quickly traveling to locations close to where you need to go. Fun fact, the same tune is used in Super Mario Bros. 3 for the flute as in The Legend of Zelda. The flute is also required to access some dungeons. A handy item on the world map. The one issue it has is that it carries you to any randomly beaten dungeon, so you might be forced to use it multiple times. MEAT! The meat are bought at two secret shops, either for 100 rupees or 60 rupees. It has no function besides giving it to certain NPCs that blocks you from accessing further into some dungeons. Useless besides that fact. PAPER AND MAGIC BOTTLES! The paper is required in order to open up the old woman's potion shops. You can buy either the blue or the red potion. The red potion is recommended to buy because you can use it twice to heal all your health. You can also buy two separate blue potions to make a red potion, but it's a waste of rupees as it's cheaper just buying a red potion. A very useful item, especially the red potion, and super useful in dungeons when you are at the clutch. Magic Wand a long range attack that by itself is pretty useless. Combined with the passive item known as the magic book on the other hand, and it becomes a little bit less useless. With the magic book it creates a fire at whatever target it hits, so it can be used to lighten up darkened rooms as well. The true potential, and what made me open my eyes to this item, besides it being pretty cool, with this magic shot, is its effectiveness against certain boss creatures, especially the fast moving blue Lenmola which the remaining fire will make short work of. 
It can have two shots fired with a magic wand in total, and two fires at all times on the screen. It's a cool item and the game's coolest in my opinion, even if it has limited usefulness. Now, let's go through the passive items that I haven't covered yet. Wrath! The Wrath is used to enter two locations, and besides that, it has no other uses. An item that is neat in theory, but poor in execution. Very situational, making it a rather lackluster item. Ladder! The ladder is automatically used when approaching a river. Can be used to pass over One Piece rivers, or used as a safe spot to avoid some enemies in certain dungeon rooms. A bit more useful in comparison with the Wrath, and has some neat usage in the game thanks to it. Required in order to beat the game, just like the Wrath. Blue and Red Ring! The blue ring is bought at a secret shop and costs 250 rupees to buy. It halves all damage and turns Link's tunics from green to blue. The red ring can be found in the final dungeon and halves the damage even further, making Link almost invincible. Change the blue tunic to a red color tunic. These rings are very useful and it's recommended to use them. Master Key! The keys are required to open the locked doors and can be found in dungeons or bought at stores. Once one is used, it disappears forever. The master key on the other hand opens all locked doors and doesn't cost a single key. A very useful item that eliminates the need to explore dungeons, making them easier. P -p -p power Bracelet! Required in order to unlock the hidden shortcuts. Make you able to push the heavy shortcut blocks. The shortcut will make you choose between three stairs that will take you to one or four shortcuts. A handy item that makes traveling to certain locations faster, a lot easier and safer. The Magic Shield The Magic Shield can be bought at several stores and block magic attacks from enemies. A very handy item which makes your survival easier. Watch out for like likes though as they love eating up the magical shield if you would end up getting caught. As for the swords, there are three different swords. The wooden sword, which is your basic starter weapon, the silver sword, which doubles the damage output and looks sleeker, and finally the most powerful sword of the game, the medical sword, which makes you even stronger and is the coolest looking sword of the game. Now let's move on to the music. While this game doesn't have the most tracks to it, they are pretty good and fit the game well. The intro theme is mystical and quest inspiring. The overworld theme is catchy and very good to listen to, making the overworld a joy to explore. The dungeon theme is good as well, but can become a bit repetitive after a while, but fit the dark dankness of the dungeons very well. The final dungeon theme is my favorite track of the game, and it's very menacing despite being repetitive, and by hearing it, you just know that you're up against your biggest battle yet. And finally, the game over theme, which is the same as the end credit theme. It's a bit sad, but moves over into becoming a happy, upbeat theme. Death has never been this joyous before. So, after collecting all 8 pieces of the Triforce, you make it to the final dungeon, which is supposed to be the hardest, but I don't fully agree. You reach Ganon's room, in which you fight against him and kill him with a silver arrow. You then rescue the princess and pieces is restored to Hyrule. Or so you thought because the adventure is not over yet as the second quest starts. You know a save file is on the second quest because a white sword is displayed next to Link. Naming your save file Zelda will take you to the second quest right off the bat. I guess your character was named Zelda from the very start. The second quest has all dungeon locations, secrets and shops location changed. Dungeons has changed as well and are generally harder early on in the game, and include secret wall entrances and multiple dungeon items as well as a few new enemy variants like the red and blue bubbles, which prevents you from attacking with your sword unless you get hit by the other colored bubble or restart the game. The true ending lies at the end of the second quest and the game displays how many retries you had in the game after beating it. While I enjoy the first quest more, I must say that the second quest is still enjoyable. So, what are my final opinion about the game and does it hold up? Both yes and no. This game are from a different time in gaming history where you had to keep tracks on things yourself 
can find things on your own or by sharing it with your peers at work or chums at schools. It's a game where you go and explore every nook and cranny, just like Miyamoto envisioned it. With how we are as gamers today, and don't have the same amount of time exploring on our own, it hasn't aged well to what we are used to. But as a game mechanic, it holds up today, and we see this in games like Breath of the Wild, which reinvents the formula used in The Legend of Zelda and Zelda 2 Adventure of Link. As this game is about finding secrets, I must say it has aged well, as there are secrets to discover for me now as an adult that I had no idea about. If you want this game's full immersion, you go looking for things on your own, but to play this game time effectively, I recommend looking up a map online to make it a breeze finding your way, especially on the second quest dungeons, which can be confusing. The gameplay on the other hand hasn't aged the best as it's very stiff and restricted thanks to the NES's limitation, which later installments made better. Overall, it's a great game that part a huge legacy for gaming to come, and even if I feel very nostalgic about it, I enjoyed my time beating the second quest for the first time, thus beating the game for real for the first time, 33 years after the game coming out. For casual Zelda fans, you can skip this one, but diehard Zelda fans owe it to themselves to beat and complete this fantastic game. That's it for the first game in the series. Next time, we'll look for the direct sequel to this game, known as Zelda 2 Adventure of Link, which made drastic changes that made it into the black sheep of the Zelda series, but inspired a lot of things in other Zelda titles. I hope you enjoy this review, and have a fantastic day! Hello everybody, Frogface here. Thank you very much for watching this review of The Legend of Zelda NES, or for the NES rather. If you enjoyed this video, consider becoming part of the Frog Squad by subscribing today if you haven't already. Otherwise, give it a good old thumbs up. A special thanks to Hikikomori Media and Patrick Peterson for their Patreon pledges. So, let me know about your fondest memory of this game, if you have any. Otherwise, press here for the master playlist. I think it's up here, or maybe it's down here. Uh, no, it's down here. Mass playlist is down here. Another review over here. Press up here on the frog to subscribe. I highly recommend you doing that. Either way, thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought by leaving a comment down below in the comment section down here. And uh, I'll see you next time where I'm gonna review Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. Take care, everyone. Stay froggy. And I shall see you in my next video. Bye!